So yeah. let's talk a little bit about those tree borers. Yeah, uh, why are wood boring insects important? They mm -hmm. can actually cause the de decline of a tree or even the death of a tree. Okay. They're tunneling into the wood, they might be feeding underneath the bark, and they're actually injuring the, the tree. And often you think of them as nature's way to decompose a tree while it's still standing. Okay. They usually <laughs> at, go after weakened trees or declining trees, but there's some pests we have will go after trees that look apparently pretty healthy. Okay. So what happens when you see a hole in a branch or in a trunk of the tree? Can you see these holes here? This is a camphor shot borer. It's a ambrosia beetle from, uh, from Asia. Mm. It came over here. And when you see holes in the tree, that means that beetle's been in there probably a year wow, or even cool. longer. Okay. That means those are the exit holes. Okay. So that indicates, now a lot of people get uh, yellow-bellied sapsucker and other woodpeckers yeah. uh, holes uh, confused, but these are more random where the uh, yellow-bellied sapsucker more encircles the trunk of the tree. Right. Okay. But ambrosia beetles, when they when they tunnel in, just think of somebody with a drill. They drill straight into the tree and then make a right or left turn. So <laughs> I split these twigs, and once inside the plant, then they inoculate it with a fungi. And the white amb ambrosial fungi is what the larvae feed on. Oh, okay. So they make their own little mushroom garden inside your tree. Right. And that can be a big problem. Often in late winter, early spring, we'll see the granulate ambrosia beetle. And as you can see here, the beetle will have these little toothpick-like frass mm -hmm. tubes. As they tunnel in, they eject out the, the sawdust-like frass, and okay. you'll see these little things, maybe an inch long or so. And if you touch them, they just disintegrate. Right. So to protect against these, you have to put a protective insecticide spray on the, uh, the bark of the tree. So now, when would, you, when would you do that? Well, for ambrosia beetle, like the granulate ambrosia beetle, we do that when it when we get those first 70 degree temperature days in late winter, early spring. Okay. The beetles start flying then and become active. And we actually put out traps baited with ethyl alcohol. Mm. They go right to it because a stressed tree releases uh. ethyl alcohol and they'll go to the trap. And so we all usually tell our county agents when the, the beetles are flying so they can get the word out. Okay. Yeah. Every year we also see clear wing borers. Mm -hmm. Now this, you can see these round holes, clear Pretty wing size. borers, mm -hmm. and here is actually the, the uh, lilac borer, you can see it, or a banded ash clear wing, I think it's lilac borer. It also attacks ash trees, lilac and ash. This is a native clear wing borer, so it's actually a moth. It flies around during the day, it's a day flying moth, mm -hmm. and uh, it'll lay its egg. Other uh, clear wing borers would be the dogwood borer, yeah. the peach tree borer, let me show you some, the, what these moths actually look like. Yeah, that's so neat. They're called clear wings because they don't have all the wing covered with scale. Okay. And so they mimic bees and wasps and little, they flit around in the sunshine like you would see a bee. Yeah. And so predators kind of leave them alone. They're not gonna mess with a bee. They don't wanna get attacked, so to speak. <laughs> Sometimes uh, we don't think of uh, the peach tree borer will attack plants in the genus Prunus, which includes cherry laurel mm -hmm. or Otoleucan laurel. So this is the trunk of one, and you can see wow. that it has totally been, if I turn it around here, here's the actual moth, lays its egg on the trunk, the caterpillar then feeds underneath the bark, and you can see here all the yeah. bark has been, has got off the, you know, fallen off. So this girdles the plant and kills it. Okay. The, the water can't go up and down the tree. So that's, uh, that, that actually killed the plant. We have some other uh, uh, beetles, they're called, let me move this out of the way, these are called metallic wood boring beetles, yeah, and the larvae are called flat-headed borers. And the, so the larvae gets underneath the bark again, and as you can see here on this, this uh, tree trunk, it kind of makes a spiral as it goes and feeds underneath. Kills that cambial tissue. So the beetles come out, they often lay their eggs on the sunny part of the side of the tree, south or southwest side in the spring, and then the caterpillars are underneath. And they're gonna be underneath the tree for a year or so. Wow. And then they'll come out the next year usually. Sometimes you'll, the, we have a new pest, it's a, uh, called the emerald ash oh, borer. Right. It's from China. Yeah. And it got over here in 2010, we found it in Knoxville area 
it now it's in Middle Tennessee uh -oh. and it's heading this it's way. Heading this I don't way. know if it's yeah. I don't think it's been found here yet okay. in West Tennessee, but you can see here this is the the wood of the tree underneath the bark and it look you see these meandering tunnels. That's where the flat-headed boar larvae it's kind of flattened and it can live there and it feeds feeds on the uh, uh, cambial tissue. Mm -hmm. So that's the water conducting tissue, the growth ring uh, tissue that uh, allows the plant to grow. So this will, within a few years, kill the tree also. Wow. So we're really going to lose probably most all of our ash trees, native ash trees in North America. Uh, this, the little pink shows here where, where there's a D-shaped exit hole. I just painted it pink so it would show up better. Okay. It's kind of hard to see on the bark. So we did that to accent it. But that means that that beetle had been in there a year and it emerged in the spring. So we generally use systemic insecticides. To, if there's a tree, like an ash tree, that you want to preserve in your front yard and side yard, a real nice tree, you can uh, treat it with uh, uh, tree injection products like triage or we can uh, drench around the roots okay. with systemic, systemic. insecticides. Uh, so can you, you can, can you kill you use those as a preventative though? Well, we I would, we don't recommend uh, using the insecticides. They're a little expensive okay. until you actually have these cited in your county. Okay. Once they're in your county, you can start protecting it. Okay. So I wouldn't do anything right now. There's no need to. Right. But if you notice trees in general with wood boring insects, they're going to start to see some branch die back mm -hmm. in the top of the tree first. You'll see a thinner canopy, fewer leaves. Mm -hmm. You might even, with the emerald ash borer, you might even see a uh, uh, epicormic sprouts that are at the base of the oh, tree. Okay. So it's putting up all these little sprouts because the top of the tree is just starting to die. Okay. So you really want to treat this though early before there's much damage if you want to preserve the tree. Okay. Gotcha. I just wanted to show you here is uh, we made a nice little display showing the emerald ash borer. The beetle is right here, the beetles. They're not very big at all. No, they're not. Um, but they're, metal they're metallic green, emerald color. The larvae are what do most of the damage, and they're elongated, might be an inch or so long, uh, kind of cream colored. So this is really ecological disaster. It's going to kill most wow. of the ash trees in North America. And that, uh, it got over here. Once it got here, we couldn't do much about it because it already started to spread. People actually cut down trees, move firewood. So that's why it's important not to bring firewood yeah. into our state parks from up. elsewhere. Right. Uh, a, a pest we don't have in Tennessee and we don't want is the <laughs> Asian longhorn beetle. It's okay. one of the round-headed borers. This is also, you can see it has the real long antennae. That's mm -hmm. why it's called longhorn beetles. We have native longhorn beetles, but this one likes to attack maple trees mm. and buckeye trees okay. and horse chestnut. So we have you know, millions of, of uh, maple trees. We don't need a wood boring pest. No. The, the closest infestation is Claremont County, Ohio, east of Cincinnati, Ohio, but north of the Ohio River. Okay. They're trying to eradicate that right now and doing a pretty good job. So whenever this is found, we actually go in and try to eradicate it because it could do a lot of damage. Wow, that's some good stuff. Yeah, there's, there's just uh, lots, and, and we really tell people that, uh, when it comes to wood boring insects, you have to ha have some preventative sprays. When you plant a new tree and you put it in the ground, you want to drench it with an insecticide for, for pests like round-headed borers, flat-headed borers, uh, those beetle uh, borers, that okay. will protect them. Other uh, type borers, like clear wing borers, you'll have to put a trunk spray. But we have all that information at UT Extension Publications. Sure. Uh, we can check out uh, PB 1589. Okay. It has a lot of information. Look at this, you already know the number. That's pretty good. Thank you, Doc. That was good information. Thank you, Chris. Good stuff, good stuff. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button below.